Hi, I'm Dr. Vicki Peterson. I want to talk to you today about vitamin K. It's something we've definitely spoken about before, usually in concert with vitamin D3. Uh, they're both fat-soluble vitamins, and what we've talked about in the past is that vitamin D is great for absorbing calcium, but K vitamin K2 tells that calcium where to go and where not to go. But there are some more nuances about it that I wanted to get into today. So uh, there are sort of divisions, if you will, of, of vitamin K and there's MK7 and MK4 are the two best known. Uh, MK7 is in a lot of supplements. MK4 less so. And I think we'll probably start seeing more and more of that. Um, but I wanted to go into the differences. So uh, MK7, I'm, I'm going to be looking at my notes a little bit here. So if you see my eyes wander, that's why. Um, so MK7 is very particular for making sure that calcium goes into the bones. Um, it also uh, affects liver health. And those are the two major things that it does. So making sure once again that that calcium that's absorbed and the vitamin D helps with that, that it's going where we want it to go, which is in the bones. But the MK4 is really good for making sure that the calcium doesn't go to other tissues in the body. So the seven is protective of the bones and the liver, and the four is protective of, of other areas in the body, uh, very particularly the heart. So if you're having some arterial sclerosis, if you're at risk for heart attack, heart disease, you've already had it, uh, then a nice um, robust level of MK4 in your diet or supplementation would be very good. MK4 is also known to support hormone production, so balancing hormones. It's also anti-cancer, so turning off cancer genes. So MK4 is, is very busy and very... Um, supportive of, of overall health. So we want to make sure we're getting enough of it. Interestingly, uh, as animals, we will take the even the MK7 that uh, is taken in or the vitamin K1 that we take in from leafy greens and turn it into the MK4. So our bodies, animals and, and us have this ability to to shunt and make MK4 from, from the vitamin K that's coming in, which shows how important it is. Uh, someone wrote to me about the importance of MK4 with brain health. Makes sense. I didn't see a lot of research on that yet, but makes sense that if it's uh, supporting hormones and it's supporting making sure that calcium is not um, being directed into the wrong tissues and also being pulled from tissues where maybe it's been building up like um, your arteries, then it makes sense that it would be brain protective as well. So it's really important that we're looking at this and making sure that we're getting enough. Um, the dosage of vitamin K on a daily level for the average person is 100 to 200 micrograms. Uh, I saw a quote about the Japanese who eat natto, which is the fermented soy. Uh, they get over 200 micrograms in a day just because natto is so rich in vitamin K and uh, it's an integral part of their diet. When we're looking at fermented soy, which is nice if you're trying to avoid uh, animal products that are also rich in vitamin K2, then you have uh, tempeh and miso, uh, tamari, shoyu, and then of course natto. So bringing these into your diet if you're kind of avoiding the heavy meat and egg yolks and organ meats. So organ meats and egg yolks are the highest in the vitamin K2, but if you're trying to avoid that, then you can definitely go into the fermented soy arena. Uh, fermented soy is, is the healthiest. You have to make sure it's organic. So we're st staying away from glyphosate, which the soy in the US is very laden with glyphosate, which is a cancer causer. So we definitely wanna stay away from that. So organic, 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 and fermented so much better. Better. So um, in my household at the moment, we're trying to find some tempeh recipes that we really like. Uh, I haven't delved into natto yet. I know several of you have written and told me, try it, you like it. So I, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and, and try it. I've heard so, many con so much contrary evidence, the lovers and, and the haters of natto. So I'm a big girl. I'll, I'll check it out and, and I'll let you know. Uh, but those are the sources. What else do I want to tell you? Um, 
Let's see, we talked about hormone production. So definitely if you have a risk of heart disease, making sure you're getting enough of vitamin K2 and the MK4 uh, version, very, very important. Um, I think that was the best, best thing uh, that I wanted to cover. Now, MK7 is longer lasting, so you'll see most supplements, the one I'm currently using, has the vitamin D and the vitamin uh, K2 with the MK7 version together, and that's nice because D and K have a synergistic effect, so it's nice to put them in the same supplement. MK7 has a longer life in the body, and of course there is some conversion. So do you need to absolutely take MK4? Uh, I think it just depends on what's going on with your health. So um, if you're having evidence of uh, arterial sclerosis, if you have kidney disease, if you have a lot of hormonal imbalance, if you're at risk for cancer, then I would say it's, it's a good idea. Um, once again, the, the total of vitamin K2 is 100 to 200 micrograms. A lot of people say the first 100 is, is the most efficacious, but going up to 200 is not going to harm you. As we mentioned, the Japanese regularly get over 200, and then the only other piece of data I saw on this was somebody who had active kidney disease because it's really protective of the kidney going up to 400 micrograms for kidney disease sufferers. So those are the numbers that you can play with, and we've gone over where to get it in your diet. So hopefully this adds to your library of information on on um, the importance of vitamin K2. And uh, as always, if your health is not the way you want it to be, please reach out. That's why I'm here. I live to help, and we do so here at Root Cause Medical, naturally, and for the most part. So uh, we're less about adding drugs to, to somebody's body and more about taking them away because we're able to get to the root cause and they don't need their medication anymore. Your body has a phenomenal ability to heal itself and I never cease in delighting to see that. Um, but there, you know, there is diet and lifestyle change. There's, there's that readiness to make some change and have some discipline. So I'm not saying it's easy, but boy, is it worth it. So we get a chance to see that every day here at the clinic. So if you're not enjoying the health you deserve, then give us a call. The number here is 408-733-0400. You can visit the website, which is Root Cause Medical Clinics. That's with an S.com. And I'll see you soon.